You remember Friday night's Democratic debate? Yeah, me neither. The high point, this question. Is anyone else on the stage concerned about having a Democratic Socialist at the top of the Democratic ticket? I'm not. <laughs> Senator Klobuchar? See that? Amy Klobuchar was the only one who raised her hand. We don't count Bernie. Which says something good about her and something frightening about the rest. She thinks for herself as the rest cower before the fringe. The sad thing about this crop, you're grateful for even a grain of common sense, apparently voicing disgust of an ideological menace that helped kill millions is now an act of blasphemy. Anyway, what a mess. Mayor Pete is a thesaurus without specifics. Liz Warren is an evasive phony. Joe sounded like the guy at the bar after he got fired, talking loudly about all the stuff he did better than everyone else. It's also kind of bad when Dems say they wouldn't kill a terrorist. Who are they worried about pissing off? Other terrorists? Oddly, they seem more spiteful of companies, which are just people. But lacking economic skills, Democrats think companies are sinister engines run by the monopoly guy in a top hat. They plead for unity while slamming folks who were once examples of American opportunity. As the economy rolls on with more jobs, wages, and satisfaction, they accuse half the country of exploiting the other half. So now a reasonable Democrat becomes the fringe as others parrot the line that America's racist through and through, which leads to divisive factions and punitive actions. They deny real progress with race, which puts future progress in jeopardy. How do you measure change when you reject its existence? Amy's at least rooted in some reality, which means she's toast. Mm -hmm. You, uh, Jesse, had an interesting perception about, uh, about uh, Amy. We both think that she might be the surprise. Yes, I think she'll do well tomorrow, and she could beat Sleepy Joe. She's right at his heels right now, and so, you know, she could uh, really put the nail in the coffin for, for Joe. I, I think she's the only one that really shows, like, she wants it. I mean, you have to take this nomination. Barack Obama took it from Hillary. Trump took it from Jed. They're serving up these questions about socialism on a silver platter, and everyone's just looking around at their shoes. Mm -hmm. These guys really have to want it, but I do get the sense that socialism now in the Democratic Party is too big to beat. They're not going to be able to put it in a corner anymore and pretend it doesn't exist and pay it lip service. They're going to have to make peace with Bernie, with the socialist faction at the convention, because there's a good chance he could wind up with the most delegates at that convention. And they only have themselves to blame with socialism. They've radicalized themselves on Twitter. They've abandoned the middle class workers in this country. And a lot of the Democratic elites went hard in with the lobbyists, went hard in with Wall Street, and they just didn't deliver the goods for average working class American people. At this point, if you have Bernie, though, a socialist at the top of the ticket who wants the Boston bomber to vote from prison, who wants open borders, who wants to dismantle Wall Street, who wants to revolutionize the capitalist system and do away with the internal combustion engine, you, when you face off against Trump with someone like that, are facing a 40-state landslide. And that's what they're going to have to reckon with. Hey, Dana, I want to play you some sound on tape of Chris Matthews. Would you like to hear it? Okay. Please. All right, let's roll that for Dana. I've seen what socialism is like. I don't like it. Okay, it's not only not free; it doesn't freaking work. It just doesn't work. <laughs> so, da right. yes, but the thing is, here's the deal. Didn't he play some role in this? He's like a guy who ate a large cake every day for 30 years and then woke up and realized <laughs> they need a crane to get him out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he's sounding the alarm because he does remember what it was like. And he remembers watching Ronald Reagan crusade against socialism and how that built a generation of people that were very pro-capitalist and you know, pro-America. And I think he realizes that those people in America still exist. Bernie Sanders is right that no matter who the nominee is, though, they will, they're going to have to reckon with this issue. They will probably be labeled as a socialist, maybe not directly by President Trump, but that will be the message from supporters, and they're going to have to figure out a way to deal with it. And I think this also falls just a lot along generational uh, lines. These polls that came out today show that Bernie Sanders has got a really good grip on the youth, like younger people, and somebody like a Biden has the older people, because I think that this socialism issue, it's not just about 
temperament. I think it is also about the issues. Mm -hmm. Biden does have a good grip on younger people, but not in the way <laughs> he should. Ooh. Katie, what are your thoughts on the social? Do you think this is overblown? Or no, I don't. Yeah. I, I think that people severely underestimate the socialism message that is based on lies. I have a t-shirt that says socialism, communism killed 100 million people, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Young people, when you ask them what socialism is, they can't actually define it. And by the Democrats not standing up and saying, yes, I have a problem with it on the stage, it proves that there are no moderates running in the Democratic Party, and they deserve the label of being socialist. And Bernie Sanders, you know, the question on MSNBC after Chris Matthews said that was, well, is he like a Denmark socialist or is he like a Cuban communist? And if you go back and listen to Bernie Sanders' own words about Cuban communism, he was excited about Fidel Castro, who is responsible for the mm -hmm. murder of hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, he said that bread lines in uh, Nicaragua were a good example of how the economy works. So when we're talking about policy here, these aren't just differences in minor policies. These are about two completely mm -hmm. different structures for the future of the country, and it should not be underestimated considering how many young people are falling for the messaging on it. Mm -hmm. Hey, Juan, I have a theory about Amy Klobuchar. I think she might be Trump's toughest challenge, because if candidates were like a mountain that you have to climb, it's hard to find the nooks and crannies on Klobuchar that you can, like, you can call Liz Warren Pocahontas, you can call Biden old and, and frail and, and, and uh, Bernie socialist, but what do you call her? Nothing. I'm sure he'd come up with something. He's, he's pretty good at nicknames and bullying people. Uh, you know, I, I, I just watch you guys and I think, wait a minute, these guys are so pro-Bernie, but now they're going anti-Bernie and I'm thinking, oh, they must see Bernie <laughs> as really coming on, right? Wow. But but let me just say, with regard to Bernie and this co this communist, which is the president said last week he's a communist. Oh yeah. The socialist thing is just wacky. I mean, look, he's not for having the government control the means of production in this country. But he yeah, is. He is, he is a hang on, actually. hang on. What Bernie's talking about, and by the way, most Democrats support is the idea that you need a stronger social safety net in this country to deal with health care, to deal with the high That's cost of education. That's not a safety net, Juan. That's a bad. Wait, hold on. Let me finish. The deal with the high cost of education, especially college education debt, is that is such problem. a problem for young people. And not only that, you have so many issues that already we are so-called socialist on. If you want to go at Social Security, I know the president said to his big, rich friends over in Davos, yeah, well, you know, we have to look at Medicare. That's socialism, but that's because we are a caring American and people all going when broke, it comes Juan. to our elderly. All of the programs and are so going we, broke. Hang we can't on, pay you for guys them. just go on we and on. Go. You won't let me talk. But <laughs> I'm just telling you, this is not, this is not socialism. This is, a, this is America caring about its people, and that's what you're seeing from not only Bernie Sanders, aren't caring that's about what your you're people, seeing Juan. from no. Democrats who support that not, idea. Breadlines aren't compassionate. This is not bread lines. This is fair wages. Instead of giving tax cuts to the rich, right. which is a socialism of a different kind, but it's not my uh, kind. Maybe that's your you kind.